Welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm Kathleen Walter. With us now on the phone from Washington is Representative Louie Gohmert, Republican from Texas. And Representative Gohmert, thanks so much for joining us today. Certainly. Always appreciate talking to you. Well, conservative lawmakers and Tea Party activists continue to press House Speaker John Boehner for a deal that would defund Obamacare or delay the individual mandate for a year, neither of which are proposals currently on the table in the bipartisan Senate package. Can you share with us what will be House Republicans' next step in budget negotiations? Well, actually, uh, we had a conference uh, today, and uh, we were told, here's our five-part plan. And so uh, some of us were a little surprised when the speaker went out to a press conference, and, and I'm grateful, but uh, he indicated that there have been no decisions as to what exactly uh, we will do. So. I was not going to be able to vote for the five-point plan because it didn't treat people equally and fairly across uh, the the country and uh, continued to, to favor uh, some over others. That's not the American way. And uh, also, um, if people have lost their insurance that wanted to keep it. They've lost their doctors that wanted to keep it. And so there are things that we should do to make it fair and to preserve religious liberty and people's uh, religious consciences uh, that, that Obamacare just overrides. Uh, so much unfair about it. And so uh, when you had a majority of the country that did not want Obamacare to pass, and it was passed in a 100% partisan manner, without even getting any input into the bill from, from uh, Republicans, who also represented nearly half the country. And, and then you come up and you divide America, as this bill does, and treat some favorably and others uh, less so, destroy the 40-hour work week, uh, uh, strip union members of even having their own insurance that they liked before, and now we're told that we're probably going to end up with about 30 million different people without insurance when the president said the whole purpose was to ensure the 30 million who were not on it. It's a disastrous bill. So anything that we can do to level the playing field, we ought to be doing. Louis, why do you think that President Obama refuses to make a deal with Republicans? Oh, I know exactly why he refuses to make a deal with the Republicans. It's because uh, they knew from the beginning that uh, the mainstream media would blame Republicans 100 percent, even though it was on, only the Republicans in the House that offered an initial deal, offered a second deal, and then offered a third uh, deal that basically just said, okay, here, let's just uh, suspend the individual mandate for a year like you've done with business, and we, uh, we've got a deal. He wouldn't even do that. Why? Because he believed, as the conventional wisdom has been in Washington since uh, January of 2011, that if there's ever a shutdown, Republicans will be blamed, the mainstream will blame them, and therefore we'll get back to House the following year. The thing is that they didn't take into consideration. You have things like Newsmax. You've got uh, online uh, news. You, you've got the Internet like never before. You have Fox News that wasn't around back in 95, even though some of their reporters are tending to, to go with the CNN-type approach, and that is gee, Tea Party folks, uh, even though a recent poll showed 38% of Americans identify with the Tea Party, 38%, uh, Gee, when you realize that we only have we only have about 51 to 53 percent of Americans paying income tax, and the common thread that all the Tea Party people I've met, it's not because they have the same race; they don't, or national origin, or or economic status. The one line that runs through all Tea Party folks that I've met is they pay income tax. Mm -hmm. So they're they're the largest majority of income tax payers in America. So it's not some fringe group. It's just people saying, let's treat everybody fairly and equally. That's the American way. Mm -hmm. Louis, if lawmakers don't vote to increase the nation's borrowing limit soon, the U.S. government won't have enough money to pay its bills. Could you vote to increase the debt limit, Louis? And is it possible that we might very well default? First, first of all, there should never, ever be a default uh, on American indebtedness. Uh, the interest does not come due until the end of October. There's another payment in November. But for this administration to arbitrarily pick October 17th, when it's a couple of weeks away from the interest even being due, 
and, and say that's the Armageddon day, that is outrageous. For the president to go on television and say that uh, the stock market ought to be really concerned obviously was an effort to start making the stock market suffer, make it go down. And the thing is, uh, we don't want the stock market to go down, but the stock market needs to more accurately reflect what's going on in America because the Fed is creating so much money uh, that, gee, uh, they're doing okay on Wall Street. The market, compared to the first of the year, is doing fantastic when Americans have not been doing so well. Right. So it's a false measure of how America is doing when you look at the stock market. We want people's savings protected. But once we get the economy going that Obamacare has been destroying and the overregulation has, has hurt so badly, we will see the stock market accurately finally go up without the need of creating more money uh, by the Fed. It will go up because the economy is better. And could you vote to increase the debt limit? Uh, there would have to be things in an increase that were so good for America that it overrode the damage of continuing to raise the credit limit on our uh, nation's credit card. And how optimistic are you that Republicans will see those good things? Uh, well, uh, in fact, I brought it up at conference today. If, if you put the right things on a debt ceiling increase that would get us on the right track, then uh, you, there are conservatives that could agree but uh, for some reason, our leadership was originally thinking, oh, let's just kick the uh, proverbial can down the road a little further, and then when we get there, we can kick it further. We've been doing that for, for the last uh, three years, and it's time we dealt with our problems. Let's chat about leadership real quickly. Speaker of the House John Boehner, according to published reports, appears to be on the sidelines in the final push to reach an agreement to reopen the government and avert a national default. The Washington Post is reporting that Senate Republicans were surprised by his inability to pass anything in the House and angry at the political waffling during the impasse. Do you like how Speaker Boehner has handled this? And actually, I, I I think it is grossly unfair that the speaker uh, to say that the speaker could not pass anything. We we passed compromise after compromise with ourselves, and the last bill was just capitulation and saying, "Okay, all right, shutdown's about to start. So all you got to do is appoint conferees or negotiators, as the Constitution, law, and rules require, and they'll have something worked out by morning." Harry Reid would not even agree to do that. So I think it's grossly unfair to say that the Speaker has not been able to pass anything because the truth is Harry Reid is the guy that's had his head in the sand and something else sticking up and has not been able to pass anything but a, a no. I mean, saying no, 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 no is not negotiation, and that's all that they have been willing to do. And that's all the president has been willing to do. You remember his first meeting, he called the leaders up to the White House, and he ended up telling them, I just wanted to call you here for this meeting to remind you that I'm not going to negotiate. And then basically the last meeting he had, he spent most of the time explaining how he was not going to negotiate, giving him everything he wanted, and then they might be surprised after that how much he was willing to put on the table. Mm -hmm. That's not how negotiations work. That's not a real negotiation. That is a, a spoiled petulant approach to, to sitting down and working things out. That's not the way that government's supposed to do it. Last question for you, Louie. We have about 30 seconds. Representative Peter King says that the GOP should start going after Senator Ted Cruz to stop him from repeating the actions that Representative King says led to the government shutdown. What do you think about Peter King's remarks about your fellow Texan? I love, I love Peter King, uh, but uh, he's, he's wrong on this one. This has brought so much light and emphasis on the Obamacare and the unfairness. And those that say that we could have been talking about Obamacare if there were no shutdown don't realize we wouldn't have been. This has allowed us to spotlight the gross inequities of Obamacare. And uh, so Ted helped do that. And so to Ted, I say thank you. All right. We'll leave it there. Representative Louie Gomert, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV. Thank you.